It is the GTN Show, welcome. Now, although it is getting close to Christmas, there's still plenty going along in the world of triathlon. So we'll be giving you an update from all of the weekend's races. We'll be discussing some positive and negative changes to the 2020 calendars, plus sharing all of your pictures from both indoors and out. Yeah, and have we mentioned that it's winter here in the UK? Now, I must admit, I have escaped the winter for the last few weeks, but I've come back to reality, and that's the reality of winter training. So we thought today we'd have a little bit of a discussion about some of the winter training mistakes that we've made, but we've also witnessed others fumble through. Now, I know that we do seem to go on about this just a little bit too much, but if you live in the Northern Hemisphere too, then you will be with us that it is winter and that brings quite a few challenges for trying to train for a triathlon. So let's start in the dark. The winter months can play havoc with your training when you're trying to stick to that same regular routine you've had in the summer because realistically, you're not gonna have those daylight hours and most of your training is probably gonna be in the dark. So for example, you're gonna to struggle to go on the routes that you might have done when it was daylight. Yeah, now I'll be honest, the thought of getting out the door when it's dark and likely cold too really doesn't fill me with joy at all. But that doesn't mean that your training needs to grind to a halt because with some fairly good planning and a little bit of investment too, you can definitely keep things moving along. So let's start with illumination. And running is probably the easiest one to tackle here because with something as simple as a head torch, you can certainly keep your usual running loops, whether they be in dimly lit streets or out in the trails, well, you can keep doing them perfectly well. And another quick point to note is get some high-vis clothing because that will also help you be seen too. Yeah, and the same pretty much goes for the bike, but you might need to invest slightly more as you do need to have lights at the front and the back. And if you're cycling through a city, it's to be seen, but if you are venturing out from the street lights, then you're definitely gonna need a really good front light that's good enough to actually see where you're going. Well, next up, we have lack of motivation. Heading out to train in the dark isn't easy and heading out to train in the cold, well, that's even more difficult. So if you combine those two, is it really a surprise that we lack the motivation to get out there and get our training done? Now, even though next season might seem a long way off and perhaps you have got an event entered for that season, but it's really easy to stick that into the back of our mind and think about it next month. Yeah, now we're not saying that you have to make all of your training completely specific now, and it's totally fine to just enjoy swimming, cycling, and running. But if you are someone who needs a goal, then there's nothing wrong in just sort of breaking it down and having small little targets throughout the winter to keep you going. And we actually quite like to enter a few local races. So if you've got cycle races or maybe running races, personally, I love a bit of cross country because I run for my club, so I've got that motivation that I'm representing them. But every course is different, so I don't actually know how slow I'm running because the times don't matter, so that's quite nice. Yeah, now, even if it does seem a long way off, do try and get yourself a race entered for next year because then that works as a goal that you can move towards. Start off by just having nice aerobic base training that you can really build up, but you can keep some flexibility in there. But remember that that race is there to keep working towards. Well, now we're going to address not warming up enough in the cold. We've talked in detail about training in the dark, but the cold can also hamper your training. So you need to prepare. And there's two aspects you want to consider. One is the clothing and the other the physical warm up. So when it comes to clothing, the best way to keep warm is by adding layers, especially in running. And if you're say doing intervals, then you're likely to get quite warm as you go. And if you are doing it on a track or sort of over and back in a certain place, you can take your layers off as you get hot and leave them in a pile. And when it comes to cycling, within reason, you can take layers off and pop them in your jersey pocket. Now I know some people go by the mantra, be bold, start, cold and you will warm up but when it comes to cycling especially I know it's really horrible to go out feeling cold and I'm definitely one that airs on the side of caution. Yeah and talking about that I find that when it comes to riding or running personally I really like to invest in some good gloves and a good hat too because as far as I'm concerned if your extremities are cold then it easy for everything else to feel pretty cold as well. And in terms of everything else, layer up with a really good breathable jacket. That's good for riding or for running. And then some bib tights when you're on the bike or some running leggings or trousers as well, just to make sure that you've got all bases covered and you don't have any excuses. And in fact, it's not just the discomfort of the cold that's a problem, but also physiologically as well, because your muscles just aren't ready and warmed up to get going with what you're gonna be asking them to do. So what you need to do is make sure that everything's nice and warmed up so that you stave off any problems of muscle tears or strains. Yeah, so what to do if you've had too long off and you've left yourself with a massive mountain to climb? 
Here at GTN, we are strong advocates of having that break in your training when winter arrives. If you've been so focused all year on those goals and racing, it's time to actually just enjoy your training and relax a little. Yeah, but it can be all too easy to slip into bad habits or shall we say at least have some poorer choices. You might perhaps become a little bit lax with your diet or you might start let those training sessions, I don't know, get a little bit shorter and shorter or perhaps just slip away altogether. And then this negative spiral can become really difficult to climb back out of and before you know it you're really struggling to get any sort of mot motivation rather to resume what used to be, well, commonplace old habits and routines. Well we've touched on a little bit there but what happens if you go a little bit too crazy and you gain far too much weight? It's winter, it's time to treat yourself, eat what you want, sit and do little if any exercise. But the crazier you go now and the more you eat, you are gonna have to work harder when it comes to the other side. Yeah, now this whole conversation admittedly is inspired by a little post that I just spotted on social media, Tim Reed Pro Athlete's uh, Instagram post, where he has basically put a before and after picture of him looking incredibly race fit at Ironman Hawaii, I think, and then within just over a month, he has posted another picture. Now, admittedly, Tim is doing this in a fairly light-hearted manner, but making the point that you really can enjoy the time off in your winter break. Yeah, we're not disagreeing here at GTN, we are advocates for having that break, but you do have to remember that the fact it's a break, so it obviously is gonna to come to an end, so it's worth bearing in mind when you go for that third mince pie in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah, now there are admittedly a few things that you need to keep an eye on during your winter training, but by all means, relax things up a bit and just be able to take things a little bit more easily. Now, by no means do we think we are the only ones who have made mistakes during these winter months, so we'd love to hear it from you guys and see what you think. Well, well, that leads us on to this week's GTM poll, where we ask you what training mistakes you've made in the winter. We've narrowed it down to four options. So have you got injured from either being too cold or not warming up properly, having the wrong clothing? Um, have you lacked motivation and ended up just stopping altogether for sort of a month or two? Um, maybe, this is one I'm probably guilty of, eating a bit too much and gaining too much weight, so it's a bit of an effort afterwards. Or rather, I mean, there's a huge spectrum, so if it's not on that list, do let us know in the comments section below. But you can Vote on that poll by just clicking up here. Now that takes us on to the results from last week's poll where we asked you to tell us whether you'd prefer a fast course, a challenging course, or of course some type of other, which I guess could be like a really extreme one. So anyway, our results are in and they're fairly unanimous. We have 57% of you saying you would have preferred to race over a fast course, challenging course at 38%, leaving just 5% of you on the other. Now we all love a giveaway, and if you missed last week's show, you might have missed the Park Tour giveaway, which Mark and Fraser went through the details of what's on offer, and there's still a chance for you to get your hands on it. Yeah, and it's a great prize, so I would definitely give yourselves a chance of getting involved in this. There's a great Park Tool stand, there was a chain cleaning set, there was what they call a sleeping hub for putting your chain on it for giving a clean, <laughs> I know that it really is, and then there was some great sets of brushes as well. So all in all, it's a brilliant set of cleaning tools, so definitely get yourselves involved, and you've got to Monday the 16th to do that. It's now time for Try News. And last week, you guys, you and Mark, were talking about the fastest Ironman courses. And quite a few people were commenting on, well, what about Challenge Roth? Well, there's a bit of a clue there because it's the Challenge event, it's not an Ironman event. However, it is the fastest course, as the records go, for Iron Distance Racing. So Chrissy Wellington holds mm -hmm. the fastest women's race and Jan Fredino holds the fastest men's race. Yeah, now I'm sure this had a large part to play in the fact that Roth was just recently voted the race of the year by triathlon.de magazine and we should probably have a little bit of a caveat here because obviously Roth is in Germany as is, that is where the magazine is based but regardless of that it is still an incredible race and that is the ninth year in a row that has been voted race of the year. It's that time of year when old contracts are coming to an end and new contracts are formed and it is that the BMC Vifit team, who's been going for now six years, have made some significant changes to their roster. They've actually said goodbye to Will Clark, who's been there from the start for the full yeah. six years. They've also let go Manuel Kung and Sarah Lewis. However, there are still five members from the 2019 team remaining, and that is the list of Emma Pallant, Chelsea Sodaro, Pablo Depina Gonzalez, Chris Lieferman, and Patrick Nielsen. They all remain, and they're joined by newcomers, and that's Katrina Matthew from the UK, Christian Hogenhaug from Denmark, and Max Newman from Australia. 
We've become rather used to the ITU season kicking off in February with the World Cup in South Africa. Now, it isn't part of the World Triathlon series, but it still plays a very significant part of the calendar because it's that warm-up race, the first one to get going. Well, sadly, the ITU have just announced that that event is going to be cancelled along with the Antwerp World Cup, which comes later in the season in the summer. Now, apparently South Africa is due to lack of funding as they've just not been able to work um, with the local authorities to actually get enough backing for that event to carry on. And then Antwerp has actually been something to do with the local government changing and no longer having that support there. But it's the South Africa event that I think will play the most significant impact being early on in the year, but especially this year as it is going into the Olympic season. Yeah, hopefully we see that one return. And although the ITU season is shrinking a little bit, that's certainly not the case with the Ironman circuit with the announcement this week of their 12th new location for the 2020 season. And although that brand has virtually crept into every corner of the the globe. It interestingly hasn't yet been in the world's largest country and that is Russia. Well that's all about to change next year because they've just announced the new uh, Ironman 70.3 St. Petersburg on July the 19th and that is going to be in what is the city referred to as Venice of the North. So now we're going to move on to our race news section and we've got some Ironman 70.3 results for you this week starting with the Middle East Championship from Bahrain and this event has become synonymous with incredibly fast times and in fact last year we had an amazing clean sweep which you were able to see in real life from yeah. the Norwegian team. Now we still had an all Scandinavian clean sweep of the podium this year still led by Christian Blumenfeld with an incredible victory and he lowered that world record that he set last year from 3.29 down to an astounding 3 hours and 25 Whoa. minutes. It's just incredibly That's fast when you see the splits. Second place was, I did say we had an all Scandinavian, we um, have a Danish athlete in second place instead of a uh, Norwegian <laughs> last year um, and that was Daniel Beckegaard and third went to Kasper Storms who was third there last year. Well, Fraser, we know you love your clean sweeps. Well, it's very much the same on the women's side, except this was a very much Brit-dominated affair. Well, Holly Lawrence was a defending champion going into this. She had a bit more company this year. There's quite a few ITU athletes who are stepping up the mark, like so Jodie Simpson was doing her first 70.3, but it's Lucy Hall who led out from the swim, but don't think there was that much separation, and they all worked together on the bike. There was Lisa Norden in that group. Um, we also had, obviously, Jodie Simpson was there, um, Lucy Hall, Holly Lawrence. Um, Indy Lee. Indy Lee, yes, as well. So it was very much much uh, came down to a running race and I think the group stayed quite together and it wasn't until this latter half that Holly managed to pull away and take the win for the second year in a row and that left Jodie Simpson in second place in her debut performance and Claire Han finished third. Yeah and then moving continents we had 70 points through the race in Lake Taupo down in New Zealand and this was a very young affair in the men's field, certainly. We had, keeping that IT theme going, a whole host of young IT athletes stepping up, possibly because they want to get a slot for the World Championships, which are going to be back there at that same venue in 2020. And the win went to a young Kyle Smith in his inaugural debut event at that distance. Second place went to Australian Max Newman, and third place went to Hayden Wild from New Zealand. Well, the women's race was won by Hannah Wells of New Zealand, and then second place went to Felicity Sheedy Ryan from Australia and she was joined on the podium by a fellow countrywoman, Gress Thick. Now moving back to another continent, we had 70.3 Indian Wells from the Californian desert really and that was another repeat victory for in this case Lionel Sanders, he's almost unbeatable over this 70.3 distance. Second place went to American Eric Lagerstrom and third place went to Mickey Tagholt from Denmark. Well, the women's race was won by Paula Finley, so a, a good day in the household of Paula <laughs> Finley, Alec Lagerstrom there. Um, second was Elisa Dola from the USA, and Chelsea Sodaro of the USA was third. Right, it's time for us to take a look at your photos, and we've got a lovely array of wonderful sunny ones from the Southern Hemisphere and some pain caves from the Northern Hemisphere. And to kick us off, we've got this one sent in from Jane, so it's Canyon Speed Max on the Wellington waterfront from New Zealand. Yeah, it's a great picture, and I must admit, I picked this one out because some of you might have seen me riding this bike in one or two videos, because I was lucky to get this bike earlier in the summer from Canyon. So um, yeah, just a big fan of this one. I think that James has picked a very good, bike for his first new whip, as he says here, out on his first ride for it. So, hope you enjoy riding it. I would just say, work on some matching water bottles though. <laughs> Don't spoil the leg. Yeah. It's a beautiful bike. <laughs> um, moving on here, we've got another beautiful bike in another lovely Southern Hemisphere location. So we've got Neil here oh, with I'm his feeling cold thinking about it. <laughs> 2018 Giant Trinity Pro Zero with ETAP with 
quart parameter and Caden 60 mil tubulars. Now I've never heard of Caden wheels, but perhaps a, an Australian brand, you can maybe let us know if you've seen us uh, chatting about your bike. Yeah, it's very slick looking. Yeah. This is definitely looking very clean, isn't it? I know, and, but, but more than even what's yeah. in the background. I mean, I've never been to Bustleton, but the jetty there is one of the... Yeah. Pra, as far wow. as I'm aware, it is the longest jetty in the Southern Hemisphere. Wow, One yeah, point it goes, nine goes out of view on the picture. Yeah, you literally swim round it for the Ironman. Is that the one that had sharks? Yeah. Last year. <laughs> oh, well, well, yeah, sorry, got distracted there. Um, and then another one from, oh, this is not, is this Southern Hemisphere in my geography? It's terrible. Central, oh, Central, Central America. Central, so I don't know where the, it's north or We south. should know, I think that, Costa Rica. <laughs> yeah, so Jose <laughs> sent us a picture here of his Scott Speedster from Cuepos, I'm going to say here in Costa Rica, ahead of the last race in the Costa Rican triathlon series. Oh, very nice. Well, now it's time to head indoors. This one sent in from Michelle. Um, it's Cervelo S5. Well, yeah, bikes, confused me. No, the S5 not in the foreground, is, is clearly one of the bikes hanging up. I think in the top left, I had a quick Maybe zoom in. Maybe the one he's early. most proud of. I don't know. But it's the felt that's on the on the kicker at the moment. But what struck me the most by this is, is what an incredible pain cave. It's like a lab. That it's is very impressive. super clean. And all of those photos that have been mounted on the wall. Yeah, really. Well. I presume they're all um, race photos or training locations or places you've been. It's just a yeah. really um, inspiring place to go and do your training. So thanks for sending those well, yeah, in. Yeah, I guess in Canada you have a long winter, so it's, True. it's worth investing in, but super Yeah, nice. but we've also got a picture the other way showing a hot box in the corner. We've got, uh, roller setup as well as the kicker setup and a treadmill as well. So really quite a jealous uh, setup. Yeah, we are super jealous with our winter here. But if you guys have got a pain cave you're proud of or you're somewhere gloriously sunny and you're out riding your bike or even if maybe you're swimming or running, do share your photos with us by using the GTN uploader. Okay, so now we're on to our favourite bit, the caption competition. So what have we got here, Heather? We've got some good ones. Well, it was a photo from the Miyazaki World Cup uh, with... Um, Aida. Yeah, yeah, and a wonderful looking cake that she's, I think, quite excited about. But anyway, some great uh, um, suggestions. The, were, the first two who sort of come in, our runners up, are from Miguel Lara and William Gates Jr., who both say, that race was a piece of cake. Well, I'd like them we to We like tell, it, but there's a few that are better. <laughs> I'd like them to tell her that because, um, um, anyway, but it doesn't matter. Savage Poet says, thank God there's a new addition to triathlons, T1, T2, and now... I do like that one. It did make me laugh a lot. Um, there's another good one here from Gungan Works says, say cheese, cake. <laughs> it. it made me laugh anyway. Um, and then our final one here from Christoph who says, That'll make me a well-rounded athlete. So, well done. We thought that was a funny one. So that's your cap on its way if you let us know your details. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and this week for our caption competition, we've got a picture from the Santo Domingo World Cup. And quite um, quite Darwinian, isn't it? It is, well, the phrase, yeah. Well, let's see what the captions you guys can come up with. Drop them in the comments section below. Well, that brings us to yet another end of a GTN show. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. But there is also plenty of videos for you to look forward to towards the end of this week. We've got a great video coming up about what is the perfect run form and also how to structure a swim workout. Yeah, now it's getting close to Christmas. And if you are looking for some present inspirations, check out the GTN shop. <laughs> well, you're looking for some inspirations? Well, click on the link up there, Fraser, for the GTN shop. Give us a thumbs up, like if you've enjoyed this, and hit the globe to subscribe to get all of our videos. And we have had a big weekend of videos with a double feature, one of which was cyclist versus runner. So check that one out just down here. Yeah, and the other verses that we had was swimmer versus runner to see who had the most calories consumed. And you can get that here.